Welcome to the East Main Podcast. I'm Brian Brodeur. In previous episodes of this podcast, I've talked about how media has evolved from the 20th century to the 21st century. It's my opinion that regarding media, the 21st century really began with the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic. This idea is framed by where, when, and how we produce and consume media content. Video conferencing has become commonplace, and content is much more targeted to specific audiences on specific platforms, rather than distributed via widespread broadcasts on limited outlets. So in this episode, I'd like to share some ideas to think about when you're preparing to create content. The five W's of content creation. So let's get started. Let's take a look back before we discuss moving forward. The 20th century created a media model driven first by radio and then by film and television. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My fellow Americans, I am speaking tonight to the American people. In the 1930s and 40s, families gathered around the radio in the evening to listen to President Franklin Roosevelt address the nation in his fireside chats. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, live from New York, The Ed Sullivan Show. The Beatles appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show first on February 9th, 1964, a live Sunday night broadcast which started at 8 p.m. In 1984, if you wanted to see the movie Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, well, it was showing at a specific time at a specific movie theater in your area. My sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Three major television networks were broadcasting news, sports, and scripted programming, all scheduled and aired at specific times. For example, Days of Our Lives soap opera aired at 11 in the morning on weekdays. The CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite aired at 6.30 p.m. NBC's Friends aired every Thursday night at 8.30. And Monday Night Football, well, aired on Monday nights. So the audiences, for these examples, tuned in at a specific day and time for that specific content. These paradigms still exist for the most part, but things have changed. For example, in 1999, if you wanted to watch the Formula One Malaysian Grand Prix race that took place at 3 p.m. local time in Malaysia, well, you'd have to wake up at 2 in the morning on the east coast of the U.S. to watch it on TV, and that's if it was airing live on a sports channel like ESPN. Go in Malaysia, and it's a good start by Michael Schumacher, who moves across the track. Well, now, you don't need to wake up in the middle of the night anymore. You can set your DVR to record that live broadcast, or you can watch it on demand anytime if you've paid for the Formula One app. The 21st century has provided all of us with the ability to consume and interact with content when we want to. DVR, cable on demand, Netflix and streaming, YouTube, podcasts, social media, all of the above. So if you're producing content, the ability of your audience to consume content at their convenience is very important to understand, and that should be factored into how you produce and how you develop your content strategy. So let's take a look at the five W's of content creation. Who, what, why, where, and when. Let's get started with who, what, and why. These three go together. I refer to them as the content triangle. Who is the audience that you want to reach? What is the content that you're creating for that audience? And most importantly, why? So most people think that why means, well, you know, I'm making a video to showcase my business so they'll buy my product. Well, I like to ask, why will the audience care? Why do they care about what you're producing? 
Is the content valuable to them? Is it relevant? Does it answer a question or solve a problem? Is it entertaining? And lastly, is the content well produced? In our daily lives, we're standing on the shore of a raging river of data and media content. It is constant. We're inundated with information through social media, in our email, on TV, in text messages. I mean, if you stop and get gas, the gas pump is playing commercials at you. It's never ending. So my thought is, if someone chooses to consume your content, it should be engaging, valuable, and professionally produced. So now let's talk about where and when. Where is your intended audience? Where do they live? Where do they work? Where do they consume their content? And just as important, think about where your audience isn't. Are there geographic limits to where you want to reach your intended audience? Do you want to communicate to an audience that's just in your neighborhood or town? Or maybe in your county or state? Or across the country? Or maybe even globally? Also, where is your audience consuming or viewing your content? In what environment? Are they watching at home on TV? Or maybe on their computer web browser at work? Maybe on their mobile devices? Or in their car? Next is, when is your audience consuming your content? When they check their email? Over breakfast when checking social media? Listening to a podcast on the way to work? On TV after the weekend soccer practice? or on YouTube when they're searching for something like how to install a tankless water heater. So all of these questions, the five W's, are useful when you begin to think about creating content for an audience to listen to or to watch. The last question to add on to the five W's, of course, is how. How are you going to produce your content? There are several ways to approach the production process, and I'll cover the question of how in more detail in future episodes. But most importantly, remember that you're not producing one piece of content for all platforms. That just doesn't work. In fact, any successful content effort will contain many pieces of content produced for and distributed to specific audiences on multiple and distinct platforms. At East Main Media, one way we've approached this challenge for clients is to use what we call the waterfall or content cascade model. It includes a production and distribution campaign of TV, web-based platforms, and social media. We develop and produce a 30-minute television show with related TV promo spots. That 30-minute program is then broken down into three or four shorter segments, which are posted or distributed on web-based news channels. That will drive extreme organic search results. And then we cut those segments down into even shorter sound bites and promos that are posted and boosted on social media. All of these content pieces refer to each other. Social media will promote the web posts, the web posts promote the TV programming, round and round, and so on and so on. That waterfall of content is managed and distributed on a consistent campaign-based basis. So that's just one strategy for producing and distributing content that will reach an audience where and when they choose to consume or interact with your content. So thanks for listening. Again, this is Brian Brodeur from East Main Media, and I'm thrilled that you've taken time to listen to these ideas and concepts. Please subscribe and leave us a good rating. So until we meet again here on the pod, please stay safe and please stay healthy. Thank you.